guys, and welcome to my full review of the Bloody SP80. Uh, my original unboxing and first impressions for this mouse was uh, released on January 29th. And since then, I've essentially uh, exclusively been using this mouse in all situations. Um, and so I've gotten a, or I've had a lot of time to get a feel for the mouse. I've uh, really gotten used to it. Um, and I, I basically just know the ins and outs of this mouse uh, as, as opposed to when I originally made the, the first video, I just unboxed the mouse. I'd just taken a look at it and I was kind of just making assumptions and making uh, guesses on what I thought the mouse would be like. Uh, but this, uh, but but now I feel really confident in giving you a, uh, I guess a solid opinion, a solid rundown for this mouse because I've been using it for about two months, so I really know, um, I guess, what this mouse is about. Um, and I mainly want to try to compare it to the Logitech G Pro, which is, uh, I guess, a very common variant. So uh, a lot of people have this mouse as a very common variant of this uh, this type of architecture, this type of uh, design. Um, personally, I've been using some rendition of this mouse. Uh, since 2012, 2013, um, before this mouse, I had the G100S, which was uh, an earlier version of this this same mouse. Um, and the G Pro itself was just an update to the G100S in terms of uh, the switches that they used, in terms of the scroll wheel, in terms of the adding side buttons, uh, adding RGB, um, and of course the sensor. Uh, the sensor for this mouse is the PMW3366, which is essentially unrivaled even now. Um, I think. They claim that the G, the that the uh, the Hero sensor found in the G Pro Wireless is a bit better than this mouse, um, but I, I I'm not too I guess confident about that because I've definitely come to trust the PMW. I've been using those sensors for pretty much all my mice for for the longest time. The G100S had a, a Delta Zero sensor, which was also um, a pretty good sensor, um, but uh, I think it's pretty much unan unanimously accepted that the 3366 is a very stellar sensor um, and also this had a braided cable um, compared to the G100S. So I, I pretty much was using this mouse for two years um, until I got this mouse right here which uh, I've been using for the last two months. Um, one key aspect that differentiates this mouse with other mice in general is the switch that they use. Uh, it's supposed to be a light strike switch so uh, there's basically a beam of light that is interrupted um, and then that's when a signal is sent to the computer to register a click. Uh, in my personal experience, that does not become readily apparent until you use the mouse for an extended period of time. When you first get the mouse and you start clicking around, it's not going to feel any faster than any other mouse. But when you're in gaming situations and, you know, your shot hits the, hits the other guy before their shot can hit you, and, and, and situations where, where you're aiming right at the person and you, you click, but for some reason the shot doesn't register. When you see those instances decrease radically, that's when you kind of notice uh, what the light strike sensor is about, what the, uh, what the light strike switch is about. Um, and so I can honestly say that there is a difference and you do feel it, but, and I will come back to this, there's a caveat to that and that is travel distance. This mouse has significantly more travel distance than this mouse does, and I will definitely talk about that uh, in, in a bit. Now, um, and, and so that's the, the, in terms of what I mean by caveat, is that I honestly feel like if they decrease the travel distance, it would make bounds of difference, but I will definitely talk about that in a bit. But, um, so, so that, so one thing I do want to mention is the weight of this mouse. So the, the G Pro is 85 grams, and um, that's kind of like what the fans of this type of architecture of mice, they're, that's what they're really looking for is a lightweight mouse that is solid. So, um, not kind of like the, uh, the final mouse ultralight, which, you know, they have all these holes and for, to me, I mean, sure, it's, I, I bet it's a really well-balanced mouse. I don't own one, so I, I can't really talk, uh, make any opinions about it, but I'm personally skeptical with all the holes that it has and, and how it would feel in the hand. Um, but that being said, the G Pro, the only, I guess, update to this architecture was the G Pro Wireless, which weighs 95 grams, so it weighs more than the G Pro, and that's honestly the biggest turn for people that are fans of this, uh, this specific type of architecture. So honestly, one of the things that um, I really had hoped when they had announced the G Pro Wireless, this was before they um, uh, published any figures, any statistics, any, like, uh, any information regarding the mouse. Um, one of the things that I did hope was the fact that it would 
maintain this uh, this type of lightweight design. And I understand um, because of the battery and, and other aspects, the, the weight of the mice, mouse had to increase. Uh, but for me, I think I'm just gonna wait until they release a lighter weight mouse that is more, um, that is also wireless, but more in tune with this architecture. So basically this mouse minus this cable would be the perfect wireless mouse for me. Um, but anyways, so, Going into using the SP80, uh, I was not expecting it to be as nice as the G Pro because I know for the fact that um, the SP80 weighs significantly more than the G Pro, maybe like seven or eight grams more, uh, depending on which version of the G Pro that you have. Um, that being said, I was very pleasantly surprised and it all goes down to the Metal Glide feet. Now, I actually mentioned this in the description of my last video. Um, I in, in my original unboxing video, I hadn't done that in depth uh of a of, I, I hadn't had that in depth of a look and i didn't really um realize this but even in the editing and uploading of that video i noticed how significant these feet were i mean i did not know that the feet of a mouse make that big of a difference now the feet on the g pro are polytetrafluoroethylene so ptfe there's a, there's a decent amount of drag and uh, friction between the mouse and the mouse pad itself. Um, but you know, I never knew that that it's on itself could just be changed. I thought that was just a, a, an aspect of every mouse because every, pretty much every mouse that I've had so far has had the same polytetrafluoroethylene feet. So um, I really did not know that um, a, a difference could be had on uh, the different mouse feet. And I know you can get um, mice feet to replace these but they would still be the same ptfe feet that this mouse has so i honestly don't see the purpose of that but i haven't tried that so i can't really um say for sure that that whether or not that works or not um but these metal glide feet they make the they made the claim on their website about how good that these uh about how much of a difference that these feet made i didn't really believe it i was really skeptical using them there's a huge difference there is so little friction between the mouse and the mouse pad. Anything as little as like, like just a light tap can cause the mouse to move. So there is, um, so basically um, I have a mouse bungee. So I have uh, one of these right here. Now this kind of like um, pulls like the, the cord a bit. So when you're, when you, when you rest the, the mouse somewhere, the cord once it, it's like slowly readjusting to where it originally was, even that would like even that could slightly move a mouse for a bit like it's just insane how little force is required to move this mouse uh and that all just goes down to these feet it's just it's just absolutely crazy and that on its own in my opinion and i'm not saying this lightly is justification as to why this mouse is uh one of the one of the biggest pros that this mouse has i'm not really saying that you know it's one it's the only factor of the sp80 but one of the biggest pros of the sp80 is the fact that it has these amazing feet that just let this mouse just glide. Um, so that being said, uh, there's a couple of things that I did want to mention. Uh, I wanted to go over some of the uh, claims that were on the box. Um, the hairline trigger being the first one, uh, I did already mention the um, the the biggest problem of the the actuation distance. Um, it's really significant, and I don't know if the camera here can pick it up that well, but I can barely move it and I'm not actuating it, but there's just there's just a bunch of movement here. Like, there's a bunch of movement before the click is actuated that's significant. See, I'll, go, I'll try to go slowly, but before, like, before the click is actuated. So the click would be actuated right here, but look at how much the mouse moves. So I'll do that again. So I'll start pressing now. So I'll, I'll go now. There. So there's just a significant amount of movement before the click is actually actuated and in my opinion that's one of the only downsides that I could come up with um, on this mouse is is the actuation distance um, it might just be my version of the mouse uh, I'm not sure if all the mice are like this um, but it could just be mine um, so that being said uh, the G Pro has little to so little to no play so you know, actually I can click something on the computer but the G Pro has little to no play, it's almost instant. So that's one of the nicest things about the, the G Pro. Um, in terms of the scroll wheel, they're essentially the same. The The SP80 feels slightly more smoother than the G Pro does. The G Pro has like a lot more of those hard knocks 
when you scroll. Um, but in my opinion, that would be pretty much the only difference. And in terms of grip, they're both essentially the same. Now I mentioned this in my previous video, the grip is essentially the same. One thing that I do like is this little this little ridge right here. And I'll, I'll try to pick this up on the camera. This little ridge right here is really nice, especially when you're trying to rest your pinky so that your pinky doesn't touch the mouse mat, mat when you're trying to move around. So when I use the, uh, the, the G Pro, my pinky kind of rests on the, the mouse mat, which I guess subconsciously would be increasing uh, drag or increasing um, friction when it comes to like touching the, the mouse pad. But this is, one of the, this is one of the features that is definitely overlooked in my opinion. And yeah, um, there's really not much more to say. Um, is there, let me see if there's anything else here. Uh, oh yeah, so these buttons I did mention in my previous review, uh, I thought that they controlled RGB, they don't. They control um, this feature right here, which is right here, so the ultra core software tuning. So basically you can have different settings in the software and you can basically remap these to do pretty much anything. I haven't really played with that. I use it at the default setting. I installed this software and then I uh, changed it to my uh, preferred DPI, DPI and then I just stopped using the software because that's pretty much all I wanted to do was to have a specific DPI. Um, and let me see if there's any other things here. Uh, one to one raw input, I could have tested that. Um, oh, one, one thing I also wanted to mention was uh, it says that it has an optical engine. Now, I honestly do not know what that is and what that means, but so the sensor on this mouse is a 3360. The sensor on this one is a 3366. The 3360 feels just as nice as the 3366, and, and it could just be because I've been using this for about two months, but I honestly feel like the sensor feels better just barely from the G Pro, and that... You know, that just might be, uh, I guess, just a placebo effect. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but um, yeah, so I feel like it might be, it might have something to do with the optical engine. I have absolutely no idea. Uh, I haven't really done any research on that, but in terms of usage, it's, uh, it's pretty much the same. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I have to say about uh, these mice. Um, in terms of Practical use, I would say they're essentially interchangeable. Um, if you do want to try the light strike feature, then of course the, the SPA would be the way to go, but either way, either mouse would just be, would be really solid. Um, it, but in terms of like gliding, like the SPA is amazing. It's so unique and on the way that it moves across the mouse pad. Um, and I would definitely recommend it for that. Uh, I would just overall say that that the SP80 would just be an updated version of the G Pro minus the travel distance. That's the only caveat that I could come up with in terms of the SP80 is the travel distance. Uh, everything else, in my opinion, um, every other factor makes it better than the G Pro. Even the sensor, um, even the fact that the sensor on the G Pro is supposed to be slightly better than the SP80, you don't notice that even in the slightest. So I honestly think that um, the SP80 would just be an overall update or upgrade from the the G Pro but it's not that significant so if you have a G Pro already I wouldn't recommend getting an SP80 and if you have an SP80 I wouldn't recommend getting a G Pro it just it just goes both ways um, but that being said if you don't have either and you're looking for a mouse of this architecture I would definitely recommend the SP80 over the G Pro um, and so that's pretty much all I have to say so thank you for watching this video and if you have any questions leave it in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. And there was a lot of feedback I received on my previous video. I know the audio was a bit messed up on that. Uh, that was because I was using the default speakers and so now I, I, I'm trying to use a microphone now to kind of fix that issue. Uh, but if there's any other um, feedback then just please let me know and thank you once again.